What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dennis and today I'm going to be sharing with you all about the time I told my Muslim grandfather that I'm Christian, that I believe in Jesus on his deathbed. Towards the end of this video, I will share with you the actual moment I told my grandfather on his deathbed about Jesus, as well as the purpose of this video. I wanna give you guys a little bit of context about my relationship with my grandfather. My grandfather was born in Ankara, Turkey. That guy was a man's man, bro. Plain forward, simple truth. He was the definition of a man. Just brute. So honorable, so disciplined, such a provider. My grandmother, he took phenomenal care of my grandmother. He took great care of me, so thoughtful. Anything you can think of. I'm an only child. My grandfather had two daughters. Basically, when my mother gave birth to me, I was his son, right? And we would play soccer from sunup to sundown, man. Every day in the streets of Turkey and Bodrum, here in Florida, in New York wherever. And we spent a lot of time in my childhood. I was very close to him. Any picture you find of us two, I'm laying on his chest. Like that's my grandpa, bro. That's my best friend. I remember one time he was in Florida and we went to Disney and he got lost because Disney's way too packed, but he got lost. We couldn't find him. He doesn't speak a lick of English and I'm bawling bro i'm crying i'm like i lost my best friend i lost my best friend so as you can see i have a deep deep love for my grandfather his name was mustafa such a beautiful man if you've watched my previous videos i spoke about the struggle of telling my muslim parents that i'm christian however telling extended family like my grandparents was out of the question for me that was a whole different generational curse that I had to confront. And I truly felt like I didn't have the strength to do it. Now, over time in my faith, I was able to tell my mom's mom. I was able to tell my dad's mom because my other grandfather had passed already. I was able to tell my aunts, but there was one person I couldn't tell. Why? My grandfather, Mustafa. Bro, this guy that I spent so much time with, this guy that I love, this guy that I respected tremendously, like, you could walk in the room and you could feel our love for each other. I didn't tell him about Jesus. And a lot of Christians, we do this. The people we care about the most, we don't tell them, we don't share with them the precious gift that we've received from God. Now, I'm getting into the part where my grandfather ended up on his deathbed, right? We're in Florida. Him and my grandmother are spending six months here, six months in Turkey, so they can acquire their green card. Traveling at an old age, it's very difficult, it's very stressful. They were staying at our house, my parents' house. And my girl and I were there and we were getting dressed and ready to go out to eat, go out to a nice restaurant. Say bye to my mom, say bye to my dad. I look at my grandfather on the couch. See you later, grandpa. Walk out the door. Little did I know, that was the last moment I was gonna see him in his conscious state. We go out to eat. We stay out pretty late. We're with church, friends, we're with our pastor. We're just eating, hanging out. And it's getting later and later and later. My girl has work the next day. We took her car to the restaurant. So once we finish eating, we get in her car. She's like, hey, I'm going to go to my house. Because it's going to be even later if we stop at your house first to drop you off. We took her car. I'm like, that's fine. I'll call my mom and she'll come pick me up. Because my dad's very sick and he doesn't want to do anything late night really so we stop at my girl's house i call my mom she comes we meet with her at my girl's house and my grandma had came with her i'm like oh what's up and the houses are 10 minutes apart man 10 minutes apart my parents house and my girl's parents house so my mom picks me up i'm in the car with my grandma we're driving back home 
we're pulling into the parking spot and we park. And I open the door and I get out and I, I glance towards my house and my dad pops out the door. Call 911, call 911. I'm like, what are you talking about? What's going on? I start running to the house. My grandmother starts running in after me. My mom runs in after me. I come inside the house and I look to my left and my grandfather's laid out on the ground. I'm like, what the heck? I'm looking at him. He's like, mm, mm. just in so much pain, bro. I drop down on my knees. I don't know what to do. I start giving him CPR, right? Mom calls the cops right away, 911. My grandmother begging my grandfather to stay next to me. Mustafa, Mustafa, get man. She's saying, don't go, don't go. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And she's trying to give him mouth to mouth. I'm giving him CPR. And my grandparents have such a deep love for each other too. They've been together since they were in their 20s. And I'm just watching her get torn apart, right? Watching my grandfather suffer. Anyway, ambulance comes, picks him up, take him to the hospital. Basically, what had happened to my grandfather was he got two strokes to his brain stem and then another complication. And they basically rendered him brain dead. Bro, hours ago, I had just said bye to him. He was fine. 10 minutes before my mom and grandmother picked me up, he was fine. He was fine. You see, we take these moments, these times for granted. For granted. I was up in that hospital with my grandfather. I was praying to the Lord. I was believing God for his healing. I was believing that the doctor's report was false and my grandfather was gonna rise. And let me tell you something, man. So much power in Jesus. My grandfather, right, non-reactive at all. I mean, anyone else, you would look at him, you'd be like, oh, that guy's gone. But anytime I come in the room, bro, and I start praying, I see his eyes open up and look at me. And I remember I had this one video, I was like, Mustafa, the goes in the arch. Open your eyes, goes in the cup up. And he'd open and close on my command, as I'm telling him. And I'm like, I know you hear me. Oh, this is hard. Oh, this is hard. Such a strong guy in bondage in his own body. And I'm like, I know you hear me. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm like, I know you hear me. And I, I'm i not well versed in speaking about, I can speak Turkish fluently, but I'm, I'm meaning like well versed in a spiritual dialogue. But dude, I told him my testimony. I told him about Jesus. I told him about the gospel to the best of my ability, Google translating some words because I didn't know how to say some things. And um, I'm speaking into his ear, bro. I'm speaking life. I'm praying into his ear. But the whole time, I'm like, why? Why didn't you tell him when he could consciously have a conversation with you? Why? 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 I keep telling him, man. I'm taking pictures with him. I'm so positive because I know the God I serve. I do, but as every day goes by that he's not making a recovery in these doctor's eyes, bro, they were telling my mom and my grandma, pull the plug, he's gone, guys, he's gone. I'm like, bull crap, he's gone, dude. I can talk to him, he hears me. But nonetheless, to make a long story short, my mom, his wife, my grandmother, made the decision to pull him off and put him in hospice. And dude, I'm telling you, it's so crazy because my grandfather woke up every day at 5 a.m. and walked miles and miles and miles. He'd go to a pool, swim in the pool. This guy was so active. This guy was so disciplined and regimented. He was so physically strong. Someone you think this would never happen to, it happened to. They put him in hospice. And one night in hospice, there was an insane spiritual war, bro. I come in the room and basically my aunt, my mom, my grandmother, they're all looking like, at him like he's already dead. Bro, I start praying in the Holy Ghost. Life starts being unleashed into the room. He opens his eyes. I'm like, has he done this all day? They're like, nah, I'm like in the name of Jesus, dude. I'm just praying in the ghost, bro. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. And demons manifested. And I won't get into it because it's a spiritual thing. You guys got to understand our war is not against flesh and blood. But they're like, stop praying for him. Stop praying for him. Just let him go. Let him go. I'm trying to bring him back to life, bro. Jesus said, you're going to do my works and greater. I got faith that the Lord can raise him up. 
right? They're like, we don't want him to raise up. We want him to rest. I'm like, rest, bro. Y'all don't even know where he's going to go. Because there's only one way to the Father. That's through the Son. There's only one name under heaven, on earth, that has been given to men for them to be saved. And that's Jesus Christ. Dude, the presence of the Lord came in that room so hard as I'm praying in tongues. I fell to the ground. But nonetheless, I left the hospital. And I'm at church on Sunday. And my mom calls me. And she said, your grandfather just passed. All right, mom, bye. Hang up. I had a question arise in my mind. I was thinking with the Lord. The question that we discussed was, give me one good reason why you didn't share your faith when he was consciously able to speak with you. I don't have a reason. And now you see, I have no shame. I have no shame about sharing my faith with anybody now because my motto is I have no good reason not to. I don't know where that person's gonna go in the next five minutes. I don't know if something's gonna happen to him. But if I have the prompting of the Holy Spirit, if the Lord tells me to talk to someone, I'm gonna talk to him. You can ask me how I'm doing, bro, and I'll bring Jesus into the conversation because I love people, man. Because the Lord is in me and he loves people. So therefore, I have his perspective. My grandfather, I never would have thought would have been gone. I took every opportunity for granted because I, I was a coward. I, I didn't want to offend him. This was a man I respected tremendously. I didn't want him to be hurt by me. I didn't want to hurt our relationship. I hadn't seen him in years. So many coward excuses, so many excuses, 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 saying there's a tomorrow, there's a tomorrow, there's a tomorrow, there's a tomorrow, and then boom, he's laid out on the ground. There wasn't a tomorrow. Now, I've heard many stories when people are in those situations that they can hear you, and I do believe he heard me. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I pray that in his last moments, he was able to encounter Jesus, and I pray I got a surprise in heaven to see my grandpa again right? Mm. However, why not have the assurance? Maybe he was going to give his life to Christ with me. Maybe he was waiting for that conversation too. But I disobeyed a lot of us Christians. We say, ah, in God's timing, when God gives us a chance, when God when God does it, in God's timing, in God's timing, God's like, I'm waiting on your timing, man, right now, right now, right now. Holy Spirit's like, do it now. And you're like, nah, nah, I'm gonna do it in your timing. The purpose of this video is, this life is so temporary, so fleeting, bro. My grandpa was such a strong man and I saw him in his weakest moment where he had to confront eternity. This life is temporary, dog. You and I aren't gonna live in this form forever. Tell me, do you know where you're gonna be in eternity? Because I know where I'm going to be now. I used to not. And I used to think I wanted to be in hell. Yeah, I was running to hell. Anything to not run to Jesus. A lot of people are like, man, why do you hate Jesus so much? Because he's the truth, bro. That's why I hated him. People preach another Jesus, bro. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. Yeah, people are like, oh, we love Jesus, man. We love Jesus. You love Jesus until I tell you who he really is. God in the flesh. The only one who can save us. No, blasphemy. No, truth. You see what I'm saying? I hated the truth, right? I didn't care about Jesus before someone told me who he was. Even my girl, bro. I would say, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, when I was in school, blaspheming his name like that, throwing it around like it's some word. But the moment someone was like, nah, man, Jesus Christ is God, I manifested with rage and a demon. Yeah, I manifested with anger, bro. Because there's power in that name. And that's why I hated it. But when I gave my life to Christ, the name that I hated is the name that I now love and I cherish that I have a relationship with. Man, my brothers and sisters, I know the struggle. I know you don't want to open your mouth sometimes. But I also know that the Holy Ghost has presented opportunities to you. Don't have any regrets from not sharing with someone. Don't have any regrets. 
Because let me ask you a question. Can you give me one good reason why you didn't tell them about Jesus? No, nah, bro. On the day of judgment, I can't give a good reason. But I take what I learned from that. And I share now. I share with everybody. And I pray God use me continually. It's a hard thing, man. I love that guy so much, my grandpa. I love him. And I pray I got a surprise in heaven. I do. I pray. Oh. But guys, let me tell you something, man. The joy of the Lord is my strength. All my extended family, they know. They know who I serve. Some of them are like, man, you should go change your name too. And I've seen some comments. Y'all asking me what my name is and all that. And did your name get changed? Yeah, bro, names got changed. My dad had translated his last name, which is why my last name is my last name. I'm not going to do a name video right now, but maybe in a different video. But let this video be an encouragement to you. Let this video be a conviction to you. Let this video cover you with love, man. Love. Because we're a community, man. I want this channel to be a community where we can encourage each other, build each other up, reach the lost, bro. I don't, maybe there's someone watching right now, you don't even believe in Jesus. You don't believe in Jesus, you, you don't even like Jesus. Or maybe you don't know who Jesus really is, and you're curious to see what this, what this kid has to say. Let me tell you something, bro. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. He brought me a dead man that was going towards destruction back to life. He's the reason I'm alive, bro. Else I'd be dead or jail or something. You know what I'm saying? And if he wasn't real, I wouldn't be sitting here on my couch in my house with a phone on a tripod talking to you guys by myself. I wouldn't. He's the truth. He's real. We serve a good God. All your prayers, your comments, your support, your subs, I greatly appreciate it tremendously. All the testimonies you guys are sharing is so encouraging. I love you all tremendously. You guys are in my prayers 24 seven, bro. Whatever questions you guys have, whatever videos you wanna see, put it down below. Until next time, God bless you all in Jesus name, amen.